and talked with Jeffrey Howard yep. and, and interviewed him, but he had he had a lot of good things to say about the industry and where we stood. Several things. One is the swab uh, result, 100% compliant. Compli Second thing is the stuff with the ALJ and the USDA. Yeah. I sent him that article, and one of the things that we failed to do is we don't think past next Saturday night. Once we get to the point where we think past next Saturday night, what two years, three years, four years down the road is going to be for the horse industry, we're going to be way better. Well, I mean, we talk about it here every week. Go ahead. Well, I talked to him. I asked him if he got your message. Right. He said, yeah, and he, but he had already been. He'd already read it. it. Yeah, he'd already read it. He looked at a bunch of it, but he, went, he took it further because there was a lot that he knew right. that we didn't. A lot of folks, right. That wasn't in the article. But also, he he went he addressed the CEO, of course, search for it and how they're progressing with that, and several other things. It was a it was a real good, well, it was real good. I tell you what, let's take a look. Rather than talk, let's about talk it. about it right here. Oh, let, we got it coming up. Yeah, let's show this interview with Jeffrey Howard. Thank you, Jerry, again for uh, allowing me the opportunity to kind of update uh, everyone on what's going on in the industry, especially over at the celebration. First and foremost. Uh, the Celebration CEO uh, search, it is on. There's a five-person committee um, and uh, that was selected by the board. There's two board members, three association members on that committee. Um, we put out the job description and the job opening. Um, over 80 applicants came in, or uh, applications came in, resumes. Um, currently, uh, our committee has reviewed those. Uh, we are down to a final uh, group of seven. Um, two of which have already advanced uh, to the in-person interview phase, five of which uh, will go through a phone interview uh, this week. Uh, the hope is, is that we'll have uh, our list down to uh, approximately four uh, that we'll interview in person on the 12th and 13th um, and then make this committee will make a recommendation to the board either of one to three candidates and if it's one and the board finds that uh, person uh, to, to to be the one that they want, there wouldn't be another phase of interviews, but there could be a phase where the board does interview those. But uh, definitely hope uh, by the end of this month, uh, by the end of April, to have a new CEO in place at the celebration prior to the fun show uh, as we move forward into what is an important time of year for us, the summer. So uh, definitely had some very good candidates. We're, we're really excited both inside the industry and outside the industry, so we had a good mix. Uh, people with differing levels of uh, experience, uh, both in nonprofit world, horse world, things of that nature. So we were, we were excited about who came, um, some of the people that came forth that uh, wanted the job. So we look forward to uh, getting that process completed this month. The class sheet uh, for the celebration is in its final stages of being finalized. We did have a class sheet committee. The celebration has been committed this year to involving more people in things that we do. And so there was a committee that looked at the class sheet and made recommendations to that. That went out for public comment. We were blown away and pleasantly surprised at the number of comments that we got, both positive and negative. That's what we wanted. We wanted to hear from our exhibitors and trainers and owners and participants, and we definitely got that. Um, the, the final recommendations from the committee have been made back to the board and the board meets in the coming weeks and we will be making a final class sheet and getting that out to everyone. Uh, one of the updates that we have since we last talked or, or last were together is, um, and it's been in their walking horse report, you've probably talked about it on your show, is, is Congressman Cohen and uh, about a hundred uh, other congressmen signed a letter as, asking and urging Secretary Vilsack to push forward with the old rule. That's the 2016 rule that uh, was finalized but not published in 2017. I think a couple of things uh, for people to note on that is, is even though that sounds like a lot of people, that's about a third of the people supporting uh, that effort as they were in the past. I mean, you, if you look at the PAST Act, there were 333, I think, people that voted in favor of it in the House. So their ability to only get 100 14, I think, people to be in support of that. And as we all know, the super, super majority, probably including Mr. Cohen himself, know very little about our issues. So, um, but again, it is a much uh, less effort uh, than it has been in the past in terms of the number of people supporting it. Congressman Desjardins, the Tennessee, majority of Tennessee and Kentucky uh, delegation also sent a letter to Vilsack urging him not to push forward with the rule. Um, there are 
definite uh, flaws in that rule. Uh, they were pointed out in that letter. That letter also has been in the report, uh, but definitely the industry would and has prepared uh, to file a lawsuit should they move forward with the previous rule. It is stale data. The data is vastly different um, in, in the last three to four years uh, from when that rule was, was originally finalized. Um, the National Academies of Science study has come out and, and recommended huge changes uh, to the inspection process. It did validate some of what currently goes on in an inspection, but it also said very clearly that the SCAR rule is unenforceable as written, and so any rule or regulatory uh, action that the USDA takes should, should take into account an independent study that they helped fund. So it, they put money into that. They selected the National Academies of Science to do it and to just totally disregard um, information that within that study that they would need to do. I, I don't see how that's good business. So uh, definitely that's something for us to monitor. There's no guarantee of whether they will or they won't. Um, it, it is in the same status that it has been. There is still the litigation um, that the HSUS uh, originally filed trying to force the government to publish that final rule. Uh, that has not been adjudicated fully. I mean, it was thrown out originally. Uh, they ruled in favor of the government that, the, that they did not have to do that, uh, although that is in an appeal right now. So that is something for us to continue to monitor something that we should know uh, uh, information about. But again, I continue to urge everyone, this issue isn't going anywhere. Whether that rule, a new rule, legislation, this is something that, uh, as we all know, if you read the papers, if you're watching uh, what's going on on social media, you will be able to see that nobody's going away on this issue and it's something that we will have to address as an industry moving forward. So one of the other things, and this is something that's somewhat uh, complicated, uh, but there has been a court uh, proceeding that, that David Boyles and Karen Cagle were originally a part of. Joe Fleming uh, was one of the trainers involved in that, um, and they originally had a default judgment against Joe, but uh, David and Karen took that case uh, and, and really about challenging a, an industry-wide or held belief, and that is that the ALJs are not constitutionally appointed. And so, long story short, that, that case has gone all the way through, gone to the D.C. Uh, circuit, and Joe and those trainers, actually, uh, their default judgment was, was overturned, and that case was remanded back. So the USDA would have to bring that case again. But there were a couple of issues that were not addressed by the court. It was a split uh, decision, um, and so, uh, some of those have to do with the ALJ, its proper appointment, the judicial officer, its proper appointment, and it's a pretty complicated issue. There will be uh, a press release in the report this week, again, probably again on Jerry's show as well, that does describe what is going on. There's a group called the New Civil Liberties Alliance. They are taking up this case to move forward. They were uh, in support of David Broyles' position and Karen's position in the original case, as were many uh, civil liberties uh, groups. Um, this has wide-reaching uh, implications in terms of the SEC, anywhere where the judicial officers are, are, are um, adjudicating any case. So it is also something to continue to watch. It is very complicated. This is something that could end up in the Supreme Court at some point in time again, not necessarily over the horse side of our case, but the um, validity and, and legality of what is going on uh, with regards to the ALJs and the JOs. So um, one other uh, quick update is that the trainer show this year was the first show that the show HIO, and there are other HIOs participating in it, but uh, implemented this USDA uh, joint venture swab uh, program uh, today in, in my email back from the show HIO. I did see that only one of the three nights is back, but the industry had a 100% compliance rate, did not have any evidence of any masking agent uh, on, which is an improvement from last year and something that I think is extremely important as we go forward. So I commend all the trainers that were uh, at the trainer show and for for having that. That is something that we need to see continue uh, so that we continue to build our data when there's a regulatory process going on, there's going to be an opportunity for us to, to comment, 
just as there was this, uh, the previous time, but us to have factual data that shows uh, that our horses are compliant, that our horses are, uh, you know, um, the welfare of our horses is good, that they're not masking agents on them to get them through inspection and they are passing at a high rate. Um, it, all of that will be able to help us as we uh, move forward with our data uh, to combat some of the old and data that we don't agree with that uh, the activist groups and, and even some uh, data that the USD ha USDA has that we aren't fully in agreement with. So uh, that's, that's kind of everything that, um, at least on those subjects uh, as we move forward. The Fun Show class sheet has just been released as well. So it is up and out on the Celebration website, on the Report website. So you can see that there and um, just look forward to uh, the new show in Sevierville this weekend. I think any new show that we possibly can have that is not in Bedford County, nothing against the shows in Bedford County, but to have new shows outside the area uh, is a very good uh, move. So thanks to Jimbo Connor and his crew uh, for having that show this week and then off to the fast show in a couple of weeks and then we're right into the meet uh, of our show season. So we look forward to that. and. Um, I look forward to getting back with Jerry in the coming weeks to continue to update everyone. Thank you.